I hope you know that with gifts come responsibility. If I give you a car, while I'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys, it comes with responsibilities. You need to know how to maintain the car, to fuel the car. The next time you call me to give you a lift, I'm going to ask you, how about the car I gave you? So God gave man a unique gift, but with that gift came a very serious responsibility. This is the foundation for prayer. If you do not understand this, your prayer life will be acting, you will be tired, you will be weary, you will backslide and repent, backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again. This is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built. So back to my story, God gave man a will and from the moment God gave man a will, can you imagine that God in his might, his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will. That God designed his work with man from the time he gave man a will to be a response system. That means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire, to communicate the need for help. Are we together now? And that God would not assume even though God left something in his dealings with man called his mercy. And there is a reason why he left it there. Because there are times man would have the need, but because of ignorance or oppression, he would not know how to call upon God. At that point, mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man. If God did not add mercy, all men may die maybe within a week. Welcome to Chat Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, The entrance of thy word is that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's light. What is prayer? What is the Bible's idea of prayer? Believers pray. Africans pray. Many of us pray. I presume all of us pray. But if we're to be honest, we'll see that the results that we get from prayer vary according to the level of knowledge that is invested in that prayer. And so God wants to bring us to a greater place of mastery. We need to understand the whole idea. What is prayer? What does the Bible mean when it talks about prayer? Write this down, please. In simple terms, prayer is communication with God. A platform that allows for communication with God. Quite honestly, broadly speaking, it's, it allows for the communication with or interaction with the realm of the spirit and any kind of spirit, really. But then because we are believers, we are limiting our study to the God of the Bible, God Almighty. Prayer, in simple terms, is a platform that allows the believer to communicate with God. It is also defined as a platform that allows us to communicate our thoughts, our needs, our desires to God. A platform that allows the believer to communicate his or her thoughts, needs and desires. Are we following so far? So you see that essentially prayer is about communication. It allows us to communicate with God communicating our thoughts our needs and our desires prayer is also extended to mean fellowship with god a platform that allows for fellowship with god so it's not just about needs and desires prayer is also defined as a platform that allows us to fellowship with god in addition to communicating our thoughts and needs and our desires is a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. Finally, prayer is also a platform that allows us to hear and receive from God. To hear and receive from God. The Bible says God is spirit. The Bible says God is almighty. And you would think because he's spirit and almighty, mere men cannot hear him. But the Bible tells us that men can hear God. Men can communicate with God. Men can receive from God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see men communicating with God, getting accurate responses from Him and responding to that which they heard or received from Him. So prayer allows us not just to communicate with God, but it also allows Him to 
communicate back to us hallelujah if you're learning say amen. amen every time you think prayer think communication whether communicating needs communicating thoughts communicating worship fellowship and also a platform that allows you to receive back from god why pray this is the first thing i want to address why pray why is the subject of prayer very important i don't think there has been any time and i, I most likely and maybe i'm wrong but um i stand to be corrected i do not know any other time in human history where there has been a global widespread emphasis on the need or the necessity for prayer especially within the continent of africa we have from church to church book to book seminar to seminar conference to conference preachers in their variety emphasizing the same subject the need for prayer the need for diligent prayer people have written books people have written voluminous dissertations on this subject of prayer but i like to answer the question why pray why do we need to pray it's important because most believers pray without knowing the need in 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 in, in all honesty I think most believers just found themselves in this drive to pray and in a bit to emulate those they admire they got into this subject of prayer it was not willingly so it was not with determination and understanding they just admired certain people maybe men of god maybe business people maybe elders in the faith and since the people credited their transformation to prayer many people just follow suit but you need a deeper conviction than that if your prayer life is going to be rich so let's answer the question why pray what is the foundational um revelation behind this call to prayer is it just to feel spiritual is it just to have power is it to ease the guilt of laziness spiritually why pray i will tell you and i want you to please listen the foundation or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something God put within man. I want you to listen. Please listen carefully. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know. And God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image. That is a very important word. Our image and after our likeness let us make man the first reason the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man how god made man to function so the bible says god made man in his image the image of god is a spiritual quality are we together now and then to function means the way men function two hands two feet to speak to hear and all of that now god gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation that gift is called the wheel everybody say the wheel one more time say the wheel as simple as this sounds it is a very 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 important subject that god gave man in creating man he gave man a unique ability called the wheel the power to make decisions the power to make choices and from the moment god gave man that unique gift that unique ability god designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man the only thing that can take the power of man's will is death so the moment a man dies he no longer has the ability as much as the bible reveals to make any choice any decision at all upon the earth but for as long as a man is alive he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices but there are implications to giving that gift that gift meant that god would never assume anything about man again from the time man received the gift of the will man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions verbalize his needs communicate his desires it seemed as if it became illegal for god to superimpose into man's space 
bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it are we together now i hope you know that with gifts come responsibility if i give you a car while i'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys it comes with responsibilities you need to know how to maintain the car to fuel the car the next time you call me to give you a lift i'm going to ask you how about the car i gave you so god gave man a unique gift but with that gift came a very serious responsibility this is the foundation for prayer if you do not understand this your prayer life will be acting you will be tired you will be weary you will backslide and repent backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again this is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built so back to my story god gave man a will and from the moment god gave man a will can you imagine that God in his might, his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will. That God designed his work with man from the time he gave man a will to be a response system. That means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire, to communicate the need for help. Are we together now? And that God would not assume even though God left something in his dealings with man called his mercy. And there is a reason why he left it there. Because there are times man would have the need, but because of ignorance or oppression, he would not know how to call upon God. At that point, mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man. If God did not add mercy, all men may die maybe within a week. Because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. And so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking. We did not know, even know that we needed it. God left his mercy. Are we together? He wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will, he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man. If you're following, say amen. amen. So why pray? Matthew 7 and verse 7. Jesus is teaching now. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Why pray? Because God gave man a will and he desires that man uses that will, the ability to choose, the ability to make petitions. Jesus says it this way, ask and it shall be given to you. Understand that this is Jesus teaching. Ask, he says, and it shall be given to you. We are safe to reverse it. Refuse to ask and even though it is available, it will not be given to you. Then he says, seek and ye shall find. Knock, he says, and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Who receives? The one who asks, not the one who wants. Many believers want many things from God. Many believers desire many things from life. But the Bible says the receiver, receiving is a reward for asking. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, the Bible says, it shall be opened. Why do we pray? The Bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking. Matthew, Mark 11 and verse 24. Mark 11, 24. Jesus again is teaching. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray not if ye pray not you are advised to pray when ye pray it says believe that ye receive them are you seeing now so we now connect asking to prayer and receiving is it making sense now remember it is only those who ask that receive and now jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer that the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive so we can connect this with matthew 7 7 that everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives are we together why pray because only those who ask using the gift of the will that god has given them receive this is very important When you have your phone, most of us here have phones, and um, 
you have within your phone the ability to call call a helpline call a friend am i right on that now if you need say you have access to my number and i told you you can call me anytime did you know that if you fail to call assuming there's no network problem there's no recharge card problem and then you do not call me you see you can be in danger but i have bound myself by my word that if you refuse to call i assume you are safe or i assume whatever trouble you are having is within your power to deal with it i have taught you that the greatest demonstration of humility is prayerfulness when you are prayerless you are proud it's a declaration of independence that you do not need the strength the wisdom the assistance of heaven are we learning now this is very important ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you so every time you go to the place of prayer you are making use of this unique gift that god gave everyone your will you are verbalizing your desire whether expressing it in love in fellowship whether expressing it as uh, receiving answers to petitions and whatever it is if you fail to exercise that will in prayer you will live a defeated life even though you are saved you would think being born again should exempt you from prayer there are many believers who are saved but because they do not understand the prayer ministry nor how to utilize this gift of the will the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear there are certain pains there are certain battles that are needless if only we know how to use this gift of the will to call for help we believe you are blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.